Hello everyone, Mr. K here again. We're going to talk about uh, VIN tags today or VIN numbers. If you don't know what that stands for, it's vehicle identification number. Okay. Um, different kinds, they're in different spots on vehicles. A lot of different topics here. You'd be surprised what actually all we're going to jump into with VINs. We're talking about different VIN locations, where they might be on a vehicle. And talk about the difference between a VIN versus a HIN versus a serial number of a part. And we're going to talk about how to decode a VIN. And uh, just before I leave this slide, go ahead and take a look up here. This is the front end of a trailer. Okay, it could be a boat trailer, it could be a utility trailer, farm trailer, whatever it may be. But the VIN number is typically up here near the tongue. Okay, VIN tags typically up in that area. All right, so where could it be on a car? Could be a lot of places. Um, I would say old, old reliable would be up here under the right under the windshield. I'd say anything from oh boy, I'd have to check when they actually made it mandatory, but I'm gonna say anything from about 1970 and newer, you're gonna find a tag right up there at the, the driver's side corner of the windshield. Um, you're also gonna find a VIN number on the vehicle door or door post right in this area as well. Okay, those two I'd say are, are all reliable. Uh, you're always going to find something in there, at least one of those two locations. Where it starts getting a little bit more of just newer cars or just certain cars is um, if you open the hood, there's a lot of times there is a VIN tag posted under the hood as well. And then different locations on the frame, you're going to find it, but that gets really tough to find. Guess what? Engines also. A lot of manufacturers are putting the vehicle identification number on the engine. So this is just, this is actually a Dodge engine, V10 Dodge engine. Um, notice VIN location back here on the block. Do you think that's going to be real easy to see if you go to look at a Dodge for sale and you're looking for the VIN number and you, for, for whatever reason, you can't find it on the dashboard? I mean, you really, you think you're going to be able to find the engine? It's probably not. It's probably going to be exhaust next to that, a starter, a heat shield, whatever it may be. You're going to have a rough time finding that VIN number. So, um, but they're there. They are there. Okay, uh, and, and notice this is engine serial number. The VIN number is not the same as the serial number. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. Here's another engine. Okay, serial number pad. They're talking about right in there where they'd stamp the serial number. Again, not VIN number, serial number. Keep that in mind. Here's another example. This actually has got both right next to each other. Here's your VIN number of the vehicle. Here's your serial number of the engine block itself. Serial number is typically what number uh, sequence that block came off the line. Okay, and um, the serial or the VIN number, it of course, refers back to the vehicle that that engine is in. So when they talk about old cars that and they're advertising, you know, maybe a 57 Chevy or an old Corvette or kind of a high end car, and they say matching numbers, uh, matching numbers on the engine, trans frame, you know, they're talking about this the engine matches the original. Uh, VIN number of the car, proving that it's the original engine. Okay. Don't let these fool you. This is not a VIN number. In fact, it's not even a serial number. This is a casting number. All right. So when it says C5, that is a code that Ford used. C would have been 60, 1960s, 565. So this is a casting number. <laughs> from 1965 this is a 1965 era casting that was used to cast this block doesn't mean this block was even made in 65 this engine block could have been made in 66 7 8 9 1970 but the casting that they used where they poured the molten iron into to make the engine block the casting itself was built in 65 okay so that's just a casting number notice it's cast into the engine. It's not something that someone write, wrote on there. It's not something a machine etched in there. It's not a tag that was riveted on. That was part of the casting itself. Okay. Another location on the is on the frame where you could find VIN number. So uh, this is this is just. I think this is a Chevy Silverado uh, example that I pulled up, but uh, they're they're saying it's back here. I've tell I'm I can tell you I've done. Done some research and I've dug through a couple Silverados that I have access to. I could not find the VIN numbers on the frames at all. They're, they're just tough to find. They're covered in rust, they're covered in grease. 
uh, someone painted over them, they're tough to find. But again, in theory, they should be, there should be hidden VINs on the frame itself. Okay, dashboard VIN number is gonna look something like this. This might be from an older car, maybe 70s, 80s model, but it's gonna be just riveted right up there by the base of the windshield. Another a way you can tell if it's the original VIN tag or if someone has altered the VIN or swapped out tags, because people do that, um, which by the way, it is illegal. One way you can tell is notice this rivet. It, it's not a completely round rivet. It's got little indents in it. That's called a rosette rivet. And that is the typical, um, G, especially GM and Chrysler, use a lot of rosette rivets on VIN tags because then you can prove that that hasn't, in theory, that that hasn't been switched out yet. If it still has the rosette rivets on it, it's factory rivets. Okay, door jams. Let's check it the, check those out. This is what it's going to look like on a newer car. You're going to see a sticker in the door jam and it's going to have the VIN number on it. Here's an older, older car door jam or door VIN tag. Notice this one's right on the door. This isn't even the, uh, this doesn't appear to be the, the door um, post. This is actually right on the door. So what happens if you get a new driver's door? because your car got an accident, well, you're, you're gonna have a different VIN number on that driver's door now. So um, that can get a little complicated if you get pulled over or you have to get a vehicle inspection. All right, let's talk about VIN number versus HIN number versus serial number. At this point, go ahead and pause the video and punch this into your browser and give me a second here, I'm gonna actually get you the name of that. Okay. So you're gonna to need to punch this URL into your browser or search, do boats have VIN numbers on YouTube and watch that video. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, you should have just watched that video. Do boats have VIN numbers? That told you a little bit about um, haul ID numbers on boats. Okay, let's talk about serial numbers. So um, a serial number is not a VIN number. Serial number is just a number that, that denotes when that particular model was made in the sequence of making uh, more identical models. So let's say this is an alternator and it's part number 9502, okay? And, and AC Delco is gonna make 10,000 of these 9502 alternators this month. Well, if they wanna tell them apart, one of them is gonna be a 9502 uh, number one, the next one's gonna be number 9502 number two. Okay, serial number for that one would be one. Serial number for the next one would be two. Part number is still 9502, but the serial number is going to go up and up and up. Okay, so that's a serial number. They're on everything. They're on all kinds of stuff. Uh, here's a serial number on a microwave. Okay, you can have a serial number on a toaster. You can have a serial number on your phone. So don't get that confused with a VIN number. Let's talk about decoding the VIN. We've talked a lot about where to find them. Let's, let's talk about what they mean. All right. Go ahead and pause the video at this point in time and watch this one. What do VIN numbers mean wrenching up? We'll do that at this time. Okay, you should have just watched that video and hopefully that told you a little, little bit about decoding the VIN. Um, that video would have been real similar to this diagram I have up here. <clears throat> I just want you to know two things off of this slide for the test. And that is basically, I, I want you to remember the eighth and the tenth, the tenth digit. I think I have that in here. Yeah. Okay. And the reason for that is those are the most commonly used in service or maintenance. So if you're in a manual and you're trying to figure out, um, trying to, let's say you're trying to call up a procedure to re replace a cam phaser actuator, the shop manual might ask you, do you have a um, engine code Z vehicle or an engine code Y vehicle? And you got to go to the VIN number in the door tag and figure out what you have. And then uh, you may have a vehicle that was, um, you can see from the tag, it was built in October of 99, but that's actually not a 1999 vehicle. It's a year 2000 vehicle. So that's why you need to know what digit is the year. Okay, so the eighth and the 10th, remember those. Let's practice here. So what model year, here's, here's a VIN number off of Ford. Let's figure out what model year it is. Okay, 
So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the engine code, 910F. Okay. So it could be a 1985 Ford, or it could be a 2015. Now, hopefully by taking a step back and looking at the rest of the truck, you're going to be able to figure out which one it is, whether it's an 85 or 2015. Um, but just by using that number, we actually don't know. We have to, we have to step back and look at the truck. Okay. Let's talk about older VINs on older cars. I've thrown some examples up here, but you'll notice they don't follow the 17 digit pattern that other VINs do on the newer cars. So anything that's 1980 and newer um, should have a 17 digit VIN that looks like this one on the previous slide. But if it's older than that, it may not have that. Here's a Studebaker VIN number. It looks like it's Charlie Ida 33783. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits. Uh, Studebaker, that's going to be from 50s or 60s car. This is one, look at this one. It doesn't even tell the brand name. It doesn't even, it's just got screws that hold it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine digits. How about a Hudson? All right, for those of you who don't know what Hudson is, that's also, that's a 1950s era car. And it looks like it's got maybe one, two, three, four, maybe four digits in the VIN, in the, in the, uh, the number or the serial number for the car. Here's an old Chevy one. It's not 17 digits. Okay. You, you can't follow the rule for the, um, the older VIN numbers. You can't, you can't decode them without help from that factory, that company. Okay. Here's another interesting one. Notice this one. Here's an old Ford tag and, it, and it's got the Okay, that's vehicle warranty number, but they may not give you the VIN number on this tag, but they're going to tell you the uh, the codes and what they mean. All right, so that kind of concludes our lesson on uh, VIN numbers and HIN numbers, serial numbers. Go ahead and complete your assignment on VIN numbers at this time. Thank you and have a good day.